So any conversation about the Sky Ray really has to go all the way back to World War II, right at the end of the war, actually. Just a couple of years after the war ended, the Navy put out a specification for a new jet fighter to be carrier borne and be able to reach altitude of 50,000 feet within five minutes of notification in order to protect the fleet. This was kind of a daunting test. It's just a few years after World War II ended. Uh, jet fighters were just coming into existence. In fact, the best technology for jets seemed to be coming out of the former Nazi Germany. Some of the designers of these jets were brought back to the United States, um, and then the designs were refined. And one of those was from Douglas Aircraft, and the very famous designer Ed Heinemann used some of the theories from German Alexander Lippisch. His aerodynamic ideas of flying wings were coming into play. And Heinemann thought that what a great idea to refine the flying wing. It's got less drag, less parts, it's lighter weight, and they can go really fast. From that, the refined design was the Sky Ray. They test flew this thing early in the 1950s, but it had somewhat of a protracted gestation period, and it wasn't until 1956 to 57 when they finally found their way into fleet squadrons. So the aerodynamic theory that was really evolving during the 1950s, was especially around Delta wings, was that these things can go really fast. And to best capitalize on jet propulsion to get the speed out of them, why not try flying wings? Uh, we see a few designs in the 1950s, like the Cutlass and the Skyray, that, that evolved during that time. And they did prove themselves as being fast. Now, the Delta Wings, you see these things like in the B-2 Stealth Bomber. Uh, that's mainly for stealth uh, reasons. Uh, stealth wasn't even really uh, on the radar, uh, no pun intended, uh, for the 1950s. It was strictly a matter of speed. And the Delta Wing offered that. Uh, it also... Uh, it could fly slow, but at a very high angle of attack, that approach for carrier landings. So you'll notice that in the design of the Skyray that the cockpit is rather far forward and a little elevated. It's right at the tip of the nose, so to speak. And that's so the pilot can see where he's landing as he's approaching the carrier with that nose high attitude. Though it did not have in-flight refueling capability built into the airframe, a special drop tank was developed that did incorporate the receiving valve and probe. So the aerodynamics, of the Delta Wing were used throughout the 50s and the 60s. Uh, it's really not seen today anymore in fighter planes, uh, mainly because of maneuverability requirements. There is, you know, the new jet engines get airplanes to be very fast, but more important these days is stealth ability and agility. Uh, back in the day in the 1950s when Skyray was uh, being developed, the importance was really on speed, getting to altitude, getting fast, be able to intercept that enemy coming in to attack the fleet. That was the most important element of that Delta Wing design. So the Sky Ray was one of those fighters that happened kind of in between conflicts. It was too late for Korea and too early for Vietnam, but it really was right in the middle of the Cold War. And it had a very important role to play uh, because it was such a nimble, quick fighter plane. It was deployed with the fleet throughout the late 50s and early 60s. The thing is, Navy doctrine was kind of changing. Uh, the Navy was looking for airplanes that had better capabilities for multi-role. And the Skyray, though fast and great as a fighter plane, was not that suited for ground attack. So it really wasn't, wasn't able to be adapted for that role. And thus its lifespan in the fleet was rather short. And by 1964, they were all retired from fleet service. Fascinating aerodynamics involved here. We can't wait to get it back to Intrepid and refurbishing her and getting her pretty for display. It's a marvelous airplane. It's a complicated move. It's an expensive move, but we're gonna get it done and we're gonna have this airplane here at Intrepid, summer 2021, and uh, for future generations to enjoy, uh, meet our people, and we can tell our stories and be the inspiration we wanna be.